What's going on you awesome movie nerds? Heading to Walmart to pick up some supplies. I have an idea of a really cool thing to do with my boxes that I house my movie collection in. So I'm gonna pick up some supplies for that. Uh, what's that? Oh. Oh, my face? What happened? Okay. Yeah, well, um, first rule about Fight Club, don't talk about to ask Fakri. <laughs> so, that's what happened with, with that. Oh! <gasps> So I got this one for a dollar, this one for four, but uh, this one kind of feels like it's got more paint, which would make sense. You know what? That's what I'm going to go for the money saver. Okay, this one, this one just has gloss in it, so that's going to make it more silvery. You want to hold on the floor? Uh-huh. This took one of our spray things and it splashed this. Wow. It's all covered. Why would they do this? We all know the answer to that. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, look. Bill and Ted Face the Music is out. Or you can buy the, 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 the free phone collection, which apparently has been the more popular option here. As you see, there's one left. Whole stack. And uh, just a couple Blu rays. So, I don't know. I feel like Bill and Ted Face the Music would have a Black Friday deal in a couple weeks. I'm gonna wait on it though. I'm just Right. So I'm outside here. I got my box all made up, and this is what I do with the boxes: is I cut off top flaps, I put the two long flaps inside so that it's got a nice bottom, and then I take one of the in flaps, put it on the inside so this is thick, and then put the other on the outside, and I cut off the corners just to make it look a little bit nicer, and then I cut in this groove for my hands so that I can, you know, pull the box out and maneuver it and stuff. And now I'm just going to spray paint it black. Then in the silver paint, I'm going to write out the number of which it is. Yeah, just to bring more uniformity to my boxes. The other thing is uh, I kind of messed up on some of the artwork on my boxes. And uh, yeah, I, I wanted to fix that because I don't like them. Here we go. Alrighty guys, so here it is, the finished product, the spray painted box. Yeah, I, I think that this is going to look nice when I have them all painted up looking like this. I might actually put something, so, ooh. okay, sorry, I was thinking about something. Anyway, here's the finished box. I even put a little bit of silver trimming around the edges just to top everything off sort of thing. So I just picked this up. What is this? This is a stack of DVDs. Um, I have no idea what's in here. Picked it up for two dollars. I'm, I'm gonna dig through here and see what we've got. Let's do. Let's do that. Okay, this, this is kind of cool. I'm finding some old, old Disney stuff like the Apple Dumpling Gang, Ugly Dash Hound. So that's kind of cool. Guys, I just found Hook. <laughs> it's bl it's it's Blu-ray Hook on Blu-ray is what I picked up here. That's worth it. That's worth the two dollars. Right? That's worth the price of admission. Right there. Alright, so I'm I actually am finding some computer games in here as well, like Age of Empires. This is, looks like a combo of Star Wars Battlefront, Knights of the Old Republic, or stuff like that. And a lot of TV shows is what I'm like. So, I'm if I can pull off the full seasons of these, then that's going to be a good deal. If not, I, I'll probably just, I'll probably end up trashing them if I don't pull off the whole seasons. Now, there are some of these discs, and I don't know if this will show up on camera, but they have like this burn mark in it, very darkened. I'm not sure what that's from. I almost think maybe being left out in the sun, but my guess is that's not playable. That looks like that would be corrupted. So I had some Gilligan's Island here, but only three out of at least six discs that I know of. This might have even been more 
uh, in the set. So, and uh, they're pretty messed up on the back. Only three out of six. Not worth it. Andy Griffith's show, I have two of at least five. So, again, not worth it. What I was kind of excited about maybe pulling off is some of the Clone Wars. But, again, this is two out of at least a three-disc set. Nah. I didn't come away with uh, the Star of Christmas, so VeggieTales Star of Christmas. So that's cool, uh, VeggieTales Christmas. The biggest thing I pulled off here is Hook on Blu-ray, which is really cool. I haven't seen Hook, and I've, I've been needing to. So I got Hook, a couple of old Disney movies, and the VeggieTale Christmas movie, and that's, that's really it. So... So what's the point of collecting movies if you don't watch them? I watched uh, several movies this week, actually. I, I re-watched a couple of films. I re-watched Edge of Seventeen, still an amazing movie. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Haley Seinfeld, mm, perfect. I also re-watched Baby Driver. That's one of my favorites. Baby Driver is one that I've watched I don't know how many times. I love that film. Very good film. And then, uh, yeah, let's see, what did I watch this week? The Motel Life. That was an interesting one. It was, yeah, definitely a smaller, more independent film, which are always interesting because you can, you know, you can do things that Hollywood films don't do. I did think that it dragged just uh, a little bit, but uh, yeah, overall, I thought it was a really pretty fun movie. I also watched Fun with Dick and Jane, and that's a, <laughs> it's a wild movie, guys. Fun with Dick and Jane is one of those movies that they you just throw everything at the at the audience that you can and hope that some of it sticks like it goes it is way out there <laughs> but it was super fun uh very very enjoyable time i have also been watching a lot of the office i went through season one and part of season two here and uh, yeah it's it's good I don't think it's one of the best things ever, but it's a really good show. I've also been watching a lot of the Clone Wars recently because uh, I have a, a friend who... Well, I watched the Mandalorian, the new Mandalorian episodes are coming out, so I've been keeping up with that, obviously. And, uh, yeah, I have a friend who's like, you've got to watch the Clone Wars. I know you. It, it starts off a little rough and a little boring, but you got to get through it. So... I've been watching the Clone Wars, trying to get through it, and talking talking it through with him, and it's, it's fun. I also watched Focus. I watched Focus last night. That's an interesting movie. Focus is with Margot Robbie, Will Smith, and uh, it's kind of one of those heist movies. It's like a romance movie as well. It starts off really, really, really good. The heist stuff that it starts off with, just brilliant. Love that whole first section. Once it cuts to three years later, then it gets... Uh, Boring very quickly. Yeah, it, it picks back up by the end. I think they did finish it off well enough, but it just it lagged, really lagged in the middle, which was unfortunate because yeah, I think it had some real potential. But still, it's a it's a good movie. It's a pretty good movie. So yeah, that's me on my drive to work talking about uh, you know what's all uh, what all I've watched this past week. I feel like I'm forgetting something though. I really feel like I'm forgetting something, but I'm not sure what, so you know what? What else did I watch? The Joker! <laughs> <clears throat> the Joker. You know, I watched The Joker this weekend, and I completely forgot about it. I, I, I can't believe I forgot about The Joker. It's not like it's a forgettable movie. Joker's not forgettable, but it does come in this weird juxtaposition where visually you can tell that this film has money. Like, the Joker has money and has a budget being thrown behind it. But the storyline and the way it tells its story feels very indie and very low budget. Like, it's not afraid to just take time to do nothing, which I find super interesting. But here's the thing with the Joker that came into question for me, are we through, like, I know we've had these anti-hero films before and stuff, but the Joker is one where it was just like, are we glorifying, and is it okay to, in film, and in our stories we tell, glorify evil, or should evil not be presented as evil? Like, it's just one of those... 
And yeah, like I said, there's been a lot of these anti-hero films uh, of late. The Joker was just one that, like, it's a villain film. Like, it's a villain origin story. And it's one that makes you uncomfortable where it ends up. But I think it's supposed to. But also, how far do you push that? It's just weird. It's weird. Um, yeah, that's about all I have to say on the Joker, so... <laughs> so I'm editing the video here, and I realize that I don't have an outro film, so here we go. Thanks for watching, guys. If you would consider giving this video a like, super helps me out. If you would consider subscribing as well, I come out with new videos every single Tuesday, sometimes Fridays, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So uh, I'll see you in the next one, guys. What? Okay. <laughs> No. And remember guys, I love you awesome nerds. See you in the next one.